Hi and welcome back to the channel. This week we are doing the rear brakes on the van. We've got the reservoir open, wheels chocked, first wheel off. It's looking pretty good to be honest. <laughs> and no mistakes are going to be made this week. We have got new discs, backing plates, vibration shims, two sets of sliders, brake shoes for the handbrake, spring kit for the handbrake, and rear shoes and sensors, wear sensors for the discs. Covered everything this week, every eventuality. So we started off this project last week and we did the front brakes, still have a bit of a squeal there. I was gonna carry on and do the back brakes because this vehicle is eight years old now and it needs some attention. So the brakes are the last big job I've got left to do on this van. The back brakes are pretty much the same as the front, apart from these are solid discs, not vented. Um, obviously the, the front ones create a lot more heat. Um, they take a lot more of the braking pressures. So they need to get rid of the heat a lot quicker. Now looking at this, there is, doesn't seem to be too much wear on there. We'll have a look at the pads, see how the pads are wearing, we'll take them out. But as you can see, it is quite grimy. Um, I am expecting a couple issues. The back plates feel in real good nick. So they're like a, a splash guard, a, a dust guard. Um, they don't seal anything in. Um, they just sit and fill that wheel space. So a friend advised me to buy a set just in case I get in there and um, they're in a poor condition. We'll save judgment till we get the disc off. Right, we just need to take out these two 12 mil bolts. Let's just slide that back. Oh, that's a bit, of, a bit of work cleaning that up. Again, pretty good nick. It's got a lot of traffic film on it. Dust and debris from the road, but yeah, the springs don't look too bad, but we will replace them. Oh, that's going to work quite easy. Just take them out. See if we can release it first. Always hit this face, don't be tempted to hit anywhere else. Right, I'm just trying to show you something. In the back of there, there's a little wheel. And basically, we need to <laughs> we need to move the wheel so it backs the shoes off. Right, let's see if this will come off any easier. Yes, that's it. So there, there will be a little lip on the inside of this because what you've got here is a brake disc, and also you've got a brake drum. So we've got a set of shoes pushing out on that. So what we've done there is just back them off. Let's do, there you go. Yeah. I think, I think we'll be changing a lot of this, to be honest. Inside there is looking pretty grotty. I think while we're here, I would waste so much time dressing these up. I'm just gonna put the fresh discs on. So that was the little bit we were adjusting. I think I've got that wound all the way in now. So basically that just closes the gap up between the shoes. First job we need to do for these pads is to remove this little clip. So this is the new one. That is in that hole there. And you can probably just see it there. So that has a hook on the end. We need to push that in and get it to a position where we can take it back out. So a set of long nose pliers, push it in and turn it. There you go, it is that easy. Hey, got one off at the back. And there you go, that's the shoes out. So this piece here is the handbrake actuator. That's the part that moves when you pull the handbrake. So we're going to clean all this up, service this, get it nice and, nice and clean and lubricated. 
so it moves when we want it to. So the thing we're going to look for now is how badly this is affected and straight away I can see an issue. This is where one of the shoe retaining clips fits. That first clip that we took out, that is the hole. So the spring slots into that. If that was, <coughs> excuse me, if that was to fail while we were out on the road, there's a potential for the shoe to come out of line and foul up and actually move within the drum and, and cause us to lock up this back wheel. So this is a good find. Um, I'm happy that we found it because we're eight years in with this van now. It, you know, it was, it was built in 2016. I expect to start replacing a few things, but preventative maintenance is better than reactive <laughs> by a long way. That breaking down on the motorway, that causing us to fail on the motorway could be catastrophic. So I'm glad I found it. Because we need to remove the back plate, we now need to take out the half shaft. Now the half shaft runs from here all the way into the diff. So it's not a big job, but it's a job you need to, well, take a bit of care with. The seals in there that we don't want to burst and, and, and damage. Um, but the, the, to get that off, it's sandwiched between the axle and the hub. So we've got four bolts, which are torque bolts. There's one there, there's one on the other side, just there, and then there's two on the bottom. So we need to crack them off, pull all this out to get at that. Four bolts are out. Just give it a gentle bit of a tap. You start seeing it loosen up. Right, it moved then. So let's just do this nice and gently. Oh, there we go. Come out easier than I thought. Wow. So there's all the seals and the bearings. There's a little bit of dust on there, so we will clean all that off. There's very little come out there, oil-wise. So, again, well, we've got a little bit of corrosion there. We'll clean everything up before we put it back in anyway. So, what ended up as a little brake job has now <laughs> turned out to be half shaft out. Also, we could replace that little plate. Adios. So we've cleaned up all this area. Just time to get rid of all the crap now. This video is sponsored by Mintex, brake cleaner. <laughs> I wish it was. I go through this stuff like there's no tomorrow. But anyway, it's good stuff. It does what it says on the tin. Look at that. How clean does that look now? We've been in there and cleaned that up as well. So hopefully, I'll give that a little blast off now. Not too bad, not too shabby. <sighs> Should fly back together now. Oh, look at that, like a bloody glove. Half shaft bolted back in now, nuts are done up, sorry the bolts are done up. I just want to clean off all this crap around here. I didn't want to do it while I had everything open, so I'm going to just give that a clean off now. Just so, that's the last real bit of this to be done. Cleaning up the brake caliper, um, sorry the cradle, and that is where the sliders go in, in there. So I've got these little wire brushes go on the drill and I've been cleaning them out getting all the old grease out of there cleaning them up so everything's nice and fresh that goes back in there got the new sliders sat on the floor there so I'm just about to build them up so there's a top and a bottom set the bottom set has the rubber on so we need to build that up before we put it all back together and this is high temperature grease so what I'm going to do is pop a little bit in there just a tiny little bit 
and that'll help me get it over this edge without that little bit you'd be fighting for ages so next step is the rubber seal so I'm gonna in fact I'm gonna put a little tiny bit inside there as well again that'll help us just get it up onto the shoulder it's like a little lip there push that up now there is two sides to this rubber let me show you there's a top that there actually goes into the cradle and this edge here goes up against the butt of the bolt of the slider so right greasing greasing these sliders you want to put a little bit well well that much on there and rub it all the way around just like that and then the end just give the end a wipe make sure there's none on the end because when you put this in to the cradle make sure we've got it the right way that's that's it yeah so that's the bottom you don't because there's a bottom of it in it you don't want the grease to build up on the end because that will stop this from moving so just slide it in nice and steady and just work that seal in just twist it back and forward and it will seat itself there you go nearly in you may need to just um, with the help of a screwdriver just pop them that last little bit in just go gentle just work it round and then there you go job done short spring on there where the adjuster is and then the long spring goes on the back but what we'll do is we'll get it over back of the hub first and seat it onto the handbrake and this is this is the bit where lots of swearing usually occurs the dog see the rabbit one in pushes through that hole through the brake pad through the backing plate and you should be able to see it down here just hook through hopefully same again on the bottom last but not least we've got to get this spring on now this spring joins the bottom pad to the top pad there's a long slot but we have to try and now get that in there so get the bottom on first and then we'll just turn this a little bit because i've got the big hole here to help me see where i need to be that's going to take some pull on that i think i'm going to need some bigger pliers <laughs> I'm sure we had this trouble last time. It, you know, it, it's not an easy job at the best of times. But in fact, you've got this in the way. It's making it really difficult. Well, we finally got it. Have a look. So the spring's on there. And it's finally hooked in the bottom. Right, just before we put the disc back on, I've given the pads a rub up with the white wall. I'll just give everything a blast off. Get rid of all the dust and grime off it. All right, well, it's nearly that time. Um, we're ready to put the disc on. 
This disc, like I said before, is slightly different um, as it does two functions. It's a disc brake and it's a handbrake. So it has two surfaces that, well, three surfaces that we need to clean up. So I'll just show you what about. So initially, we have the pads to clean, uh, the discs to clean up both sides. They will come with a film on. So what we're going to do is give a good clean off, agitate this surface, and get that protective coat off. And then we're going to do this section as well, because that is where our handbrake will apply. Happy days, let's have a look on the other side. There you go, all nicely scuffed up. Let's just line everything up. <coughs> Grub screw to the top. making sure that goes on over the shoes and it does so what we're going to do is again just put a thin smear around this area here because what this will do is it'll allow us to take that disc back off in the future before we put the drum on we need to make some adjustments by turning this wheel clockwise we can take up some of the slack. So reducing the amount of adjustment we have to do with the drum on. We'll keep doing this several times until we get it to exactly where we want it. We'll repeat this several times until we get the drum to where it's just slightly catching and then when we put it on for its final time it'll take the minimum amount of adjustment. That goes on there, the new locking nut clip screw can go in. So just tighten that up nice and steady. Now we can put this back on the cradle. All right, so that's what it looks like with the carrier back in position. The new sliders all ready to go. But I think. I'm going to call it a day. It's been a long day. I've been at work. Um, so I might just just pop them screws in the back, them bolts in the back of the sliders there so we don't lose them. Still got the caliper to clean up. Um, I'll do that in the morning. I will just pop the shoes in now before I leave. And then that's one last job. Don't think we made too bad a job of cleaning up the carriage. Um, we need to put some new rattle shims in there before we put the pads in but what we'll do is on the back of these shims we'll add a little bit of copper slip and that'll stop them from squealing later on hopefully Right, time to put the caliper on. So, whatever things are going to touch, we're just putting a little bit of copper slip, just a tiny bit, nothing too much, and just slide that into place. The copper slip just helps you later on when you come back to do your servicing, and it also stops any squeals. You know, this is this is anti-squeal backing on the these pads. But when that starts to fail, as it will, the copper slip will, should, assist. We fitted a new wear indicator sensor, whichever you call it, 
to the inside pad this pad sits a bit adjacent to the piston and it's this pad here which will wear quicker than the outside one so always put your wear indicator on the inside right there you have it one side serviced i haven't serviced the caliper and the reason behind that is they are cheap enough to just swap out when they fail or when they start to cause you problems so quick recap we've put new brake shoes inside there we've put a new back and disc on we've put new springs on the shoes a new disc new pads new anti rantle shims and new sliders and that comes to around about 200 quid in total for both sides so it's a job well done um, I'm glad it's done it's a bit of peace of mind right, you need to work your handbrake a couple of times before you start setting it up shoot all the way down and do this so by operating the handbrake a couple of times that helps settle the shoes into the right position and the fact that we do it quite quickly that should bounce them into where they need to be or force them into where they need to be but before we put the shoes on we got them nigh on 95 percent of the way there pulling the handbrake a couple of a few times will help them settle especially now that they're not adjusted up so what we're going to do now is we'll adjust them up and that will take the final slack out of everything and when you operate the handbrake it will bed them into where they need to be right so last night we left ourselves one job left to do and that is to adjust the handbrake now inside there there's a little adjuster and yeah it's hard to see it's hard to find but it is definitely there so halfway along from the caliber so if you line everything up with where the wear sensor would be to there that's where you'll find the, that little um that little wheel that i showed you earlier so now we've got to just wind it out till it grips the disc once it grips the disc we'll back it off and then we'll go and we'll check the handbrake to see how many clicks we've got on it so there you go there's a little wheel that you need to turn. So the screwdriver in. Locate the wheel. One of the notches. It's going to focus on my hand, isn't it? And just turn it that way. And that is it. Do it one click at a time. And then go and check your handbrake. I've got to say this, people don't realise the amount of time and effort that goes into shooting these videos. I've just sat for the last 20 minutes making up a miniature light that I can insert inside my brake drum to show you then that one little adjustment. Yeah, battery powers the little light, the little light is through that hole there. I've angled it down so it lights up the adjuster which is in that hole there. Okay, let's see how many clicks we are on now. That's all the way down. One, two. Oh, we've got a long way to go. <laughs> we've got a long way to go. Right. right, back to it. So we've added a couple of studs in to help us move things around. Um, just makes life a little bit easier because as we start to grip the drum, it will become increasingly harder to move it. Once we get it to where we need to be and it's biting, we just need to back it off one click on the wheel, one cog of the wheel. If 
for me that's it set up right what we'll do is we'll go and check the handbrake now and see where we're at count the clicks one two three four five six let's put seven or eight there a little bit more adjustment so underneath your van about a meter in front of your diff you've got the final connection for your handbrake and this is where you can do the fine adjustment to reduce the number of clicks that are on your handbrake so I've took mine up about four full turns there and that's left me with about five clicks on my handbrake and it feels really good really confident there you go all done the wheels are on all talked up last thing we need to do really is check our brake level out. So, me and Max, we extracted quite a little, quite a bit, and that was to check, you know, to give us room for expansion for when we pushed back the cylinders on the, the pistons on the back brakes. So, what we'll do now is, I always like to leave a little bit of room in there to to play with. Um, I like it to be higher than it is now, so what we'll do is we shall pump the brakes a few times, take it for a run, and then we'll uh, we'll check the level. That'll be our last job. Two weeks now, we've had the brakes done on the van, and they are performing like it's brand new. Um, it's put a lot of confidence back into my driving. I hadn't realised how bad they were. Uh, we've had a 10 days away in the van, we did Derbyshire, Peak District, Link, uh, Nottinghamshire, Lincolnshire and a good run back up the motorway and home and they've, they just feel so much better, so much confident, more confident, more confidence, that's what I'm looking for. Anyway, we're just packing up, we're getting ready to go to Camp for Life at Stratford, so if you're there this weekend, come say hello. Anyway, thanks for watching, if you're enjoying what we're doing, hit that uh, subscribe button. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you know anybody who's interested or could benefit from this video, please share it with them because that's why we do it. We're there to help. If you've got any questions as well, just drop us a comment below. Anyway, take care. We'll see you again. Why not head over and check out our new website, www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group, The Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.